Happy Monday, everybody. Welcome to the Brownwood Lions Coaches Show here on KOXE. I am Derek Stuckley, along with Brownwood Lions head football coach, athletic director, Sammy Burnett. After a busy weekend, especially Friday, of sports, did you get to rest a little this weekend? Uh, I had a bunch of softball on Saturday, but it was fun to watch, and then I rested a little bit yesterday, but I'm... I would say my batteries are about one third charged. And there you go. Ready that, to go. That's better than <laughs> than less than that. No, we're good. Well, I guess we need to recap a busy week of sports. So yep. I'll let you get to it. Sir. All right. Uh, Blue bonnet relays went off extremely well Thursday. Uh, dealt with some weather, headed to our ring delay, but we're able to host one A and three through three A, a small school divisions. Uh, Coach Jackson does a phenomenal job. That's all I can say. He, he, it's his baby to get that thing going, uh, make sure everything's organized the way it should be. He has some teamwork to help a little bit, but he's in charge. You know, same thing on Friday. And he did a phenomenal job of communicating with all the coaches, all the teams involved, getting them here, make sure the schedule's right, any adjustments, communication. So it starts there, and Coach Jackson, what he did was phenomenal. Uh, Going to work on it the next time we have it to delegate some of that responsibility to some of our other coaches to give him a break because it is – it's extremely difficult and it's very time consuming and, and he needs a little bit more help there but boy what a job he did had some great running our girls of course on friday ran extremely well excited about uh, what the product that they're putting out this year uh, i think they finished like third or fourth third and a third uh i mean every time you look up there's a lot of girls in a lot of heats and they're doing really well so congratulations to them thought the boys competed really well uh, every time they ran a heat, I compared them to Snyder or Stephenville and not, you know, the bigger schools because uh, we'll never face them again. But I uh, thought they did really well. I what we finished fifth with them at a 10, I think, so that's good. Uh, so all in all, I thought it was a good week. Of track. Uh, Friday, Saturday, Friday was sunny uh, and uh, windy, but not rainy, so that was good. I'd like to thank, you know, all those people that volunteered, man. We have so many people that just come out and take a couple of days and, and volunteer and, and help and, and take their time. You know, uh, one of my friends, Joe Reeves, came down this year and cooked for us. He's one of the – he's the OG when it comes to sausage wraps. I got to say this may have been the best sausage wrap this year they've ever had. Well, there you go. I, I had quite a few. There you go. That's good. <laughs> uh, you know, we started – we found when Dankworth closed down their sausage production, we had to find another place. Well, a couple of years ago I found uh, Miller's and – and Lano does a great job. I always stop there during the, my reunion and get something. They have great sausage links. So we started going with them at the golf tournaments and then moved it on over to the to the Blue Bonnets this year. So uh, those Lano links are really good. But Joe and his wife, Robin, Joe Reeves and his wife, Robin Reeves, took off two days, drove down here at the cost of their own expense uh, from other side of Snyder and, and cooked sausage wraps for two days and had a chance to hang around Joe just a little bit. He's a comedian, mm-hmm. man. Uh, got to play with him in high school, uh, grew up with him in high school, was a phenomenal ground with line football player. But had him back and have his jokes and all that was good. I told him, I said, he may be the most popular uh, sausage maker we've had in a long time. But, uh, thanks for coming in, Joe, and replacing Brett, who was busy this week. Uh, but all in all, it was a great track meet. Uh, in the meantime, uh, Friday, we did have some softball and baseball action mm-hmm. on the softball team. I got the one and one in district with a victory over Mineral Wells, nine to eight. So congratulations to those girls. Very important they get the win column as fast as possible. They only have two rounds, so they have two more games this round, and then they'll have uh, what or four more the second round, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. There you go. I almost got lost for yes. a second. They only six have two more rounds. district games. That's right. right. Six more district games, and at the same time, the high school, the, high school, the boys have <laughs> eight more district games, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. See how smart yes. I am, stuck? Matt. Uh, Math, boy. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's the fatigue and the age is getting around mm-hmm. I was hacking on you about age the other day, mm-hmm. but it's hard. my mind's not processing too quick today. Uh, on the boys' side, they were victorious 5-2 to two against uh, Glenn, Ro- Glenn Rose. Boy, I barely <laughs> missed that. I almost missed that. Too. Uh, finished the first round for them 4-0, so congratulations to Coach uh, Sanford and the boys and what they're doing. Gavin uh, through, was on the mound again. I think for us, so that's always a good note. When we have Gavin on the mound, that's always going to be a good night for us with Will, as long as he brings his A game. Uh, again, five to two, five to two victory puts him four and zero. Oh. Uh, for them, remember they played three rounds, so they have two more coming. But the way that format will go is like we uh, host uh, Mineral Wells tomorrow, and then on Friday we will travel to Mineral Wells again and play them. It's not play another team. That's where that week comes in where you play each other, where you have to figure out what pitching you're going to 
you. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be interesting to see that. I think we'll be in pretty good shape if we can continue to hit the ball and play good defense because we have some depth in pitching. So I think that will work to our advantage. Going through the schedule for the week, of course, we have district uh, golf for our boys and girls today and tomorrow. Uh, got to speak to some of the girls, uh, excited about what they're doing uh, and the opportunity that they have, you know, to get out and go to regional again. Uh, on the boys' side, we have a phenomenal opportunity. Uh, it's news, I, I don't know what happened today, it's, so it's still up in the air, but Sir Jones has the flu, so I don't know if he even went. I uh, got to talk to Coach Jones real early this morning. I don't know if he went. Uh, if he went and didn't play or if he went and tried to play. Uh, but if that happens, if he did not play, would have had to move a, our individual into that spot and, and on a good day that you're talking 18 strokes uh, different. So uh, don't know if he'll play tomorrow, so uh, I'll find out as soon as I know. Uh, but on the boys' side, they're facing a little adversity. We're going to have to step up and go, so it is what it is. But I do know that as of Sunday evening, uh, sir wasn't doing very good at all. Uh, which I so wish him the best of luck. Doesn't want to be out in district. This is his senior year. He's worked hard his whole career. Uh, got that going on Tuesday, Wednesday. We got softball uh, tonight at Graham, five and six thirty. On Tuesday again, we have the second round of girls and boys golf at Diamondback and Abilene. We got baseball versus Mineral Wells starting at four thirty with the JV. We got by district soccer matchup against Brownwood Lady Lions versus the Walks Hatchie Life whoever they are, it's at 4.30 at Mineral Wells. I'll be at that bad boy, too. Uh, and then nothing Wednesday. Thursday is uh, moved everything from Friday's moved to Thursday because of Good Friday. So we have softball versus uh, Stephenville at home at 5 o'clock with the JV uh, and 6.30 with the varsity. Baseball will be at Mineral Wells, 4.30 and 7. Track at Stephenville and tennis at Gatesville. So we still got a, did I say that right? Yeah, still yeah. got a full slate. Plenty going on again, yeah. as so usual. Hopefully we can keep soccer rolling and with Coach from Squid and the girls, and hopefully they're victorious on, on Tuesday. Uh, Walks Hatchie team, I hear, is pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, they won that district over there, and I hear they're pretty good. But so are we, and we're probably one of the stronger districts when you yeah. look at who we face with Salado and Stephenville. So mm -hmm. I think we played some more of the opponents. we just got to go out there and do our thing tomorrow. Yeah, uh, of course, we mentioned softball starting here in a little bit. Big win for them Friday. They came from behind there in the sixth inning, scored three runs to take the lead, and then they got in a bases loaded situation in the top of the seventh and got out of it to, to get the win. Yes, and that's first I've heard of that. But, you know, talking to – because I was tracking the whole time, mm -hmm. talking to Coach McGee, she just talks about uh, uh, how hard the girls are working and uh, they just need to be in those moments and find ways to win and gain that experience and it looks like they're doing that. Yeah, and the district so far, I think Glen Rose is 1-0 and and everybody else is 1-1, one one, so it's up for grabs. Yeah, and that's like Robert Dean, the more they can be successful in any circumstance, coming from behind, holding the lead, whatever it may be, uh, the better they're going to be. Just got to keep fighting and, and, and keep them up with wins. Yeah. Baseball now, they've won nine in a row. Mm -hmm. They're ranked number eight by the Texas High School Baseball Coaches Association now. Yeah, that's a big deal in the top ten. So, you know, I get to see those kids in the mornings when we're working out, and I preach to them. You know, we just had two young men go to, to uh, Abilene. Uh, Davis Lee finished third in the state in his classification, mm -hmm. and, and Cole Miller finished fifth in the state in his classification. And I just told them, regardless of that, regardless of baseball being 4 0, regardless of what we did on the track the other day, regardless of what we're doing, Period. What's getting us there is the work and hard work and dedication that we're putting in, and that's what our kids are doing. So, uh, you know, I call uh, jump to personal best. I mean, he's been in the 47s, but he jumped to 47 two and a half, I think it was 40, 47 set, 47 feet two and a two and a half inches. What at 47 seven? I, don't know, I, have I can't remember. It's above 47, which makes him the 19th best jumper in the nation. So that's a big deal. They had the 72nd best jumper in the nation. That was at our meeting, and I was, uh, he's in the top 25, but just hit the 19 mark. So and he, can, I do believe that if he just puts it all together, uh, he has the ability to go 48. I really do. Uh, he jumped a 49, 49-something, 49 47-9, and scratched. Mm -hmm. So I think he can get out there and uh, scratch by about this much, as a matter of fact, so about an inch. So I think he can get out there and hit that 48 mark. But uh, – Got an opportunity to go to the next level and continue to do that, so that's good. So, uh, all in all, it was a great week. Got a lot going on. Got a lot of wins on Thursday, Friday. Uh, got golf going on this week. Playoff soccer. Continued with our district with the first round with the girls and starting the second and 
third round with the boys actually this week. So, yeah. a lot going on tennis, you know, victorious the other day. Got another opportunity to go play against Gatesville, so uh, good luck to him. Yeah, you mentioned Ike. He won the triple jump and the long jump mm-hmm. at the Blue Bond Relays. Uh, Sidney Wyndham won the 800 meters. Hannah Dean won the uh, high jump. Mm-hmm. And, of course, congratulations to those powerlifting guys that made it to the state tournament. Yeah, absolutely. We a, a, lot of, a lot of them are running white, showing up in the win column. It's a big deal, so it's important. Uh, you know, with our program, we talk about growth and we talk about development. We talk about consistency. And with all that comes winning. And you, once you work really hard and you, you've got the confidence you need, you're able to go out there and produce it and, and be victorious. And I, I'm liking what I'm seeing with uh, our boys and girls programs and what's going on. Good deal. Well, what's going on, I guess, football off-season-wise right well, now? Well, right now we're in the grind process. You know, it's, it's not real fun. We're up in the mornings going to work out, get our weights in, and then during the period we're doing mat drills and plow boxes and speed ladders and jump ropes and agiles and, and, and things like that to develop quickness and speed in the mats. Do one thing to develop toughness. How tough are you going to be? How are you able to uh, withstand what you're doing in the seventh inning or the fourth quarter or, or whatever it may be? So, uh, that's going on a couple of days a week during the period, and the other days we're working on speed and agility out on the track. Uh, so we're in full swing of that. Come uh, early April, we'll start working on seven on seven. You'll see us out on the grass some. Got to get out there because the first of May, it's crazy, it's here already, but first of May we'll start our league play, and then we host our state qualifier uh, January, the, I mean, June the 1st. So we're only two, almost two months away from that. So we got to start getting out in that next phase and getting some guys out on the grass and start working on some skills with that as well. So I uh, got a lot of a lot of kids in there, a lot of participation. So proud of the, the extra effort they're getting to to get to the B where they want to be when it comes time for them to start competing in their sports. It never stops. It's never always stops going. Year round. It's constant. All right. Anything else we need to talk about today, Coach? Yeah, just thank those sponsors. Auto Glass Magic, Bruner Auto Group, Syntex Body and Paint, Syntex Equipment Sales, Citizens National Bank, Dan Hill Containers, Dr. Bon Young, Dr. Pepper Bottling Company, Edward Jones Investments, Hendrick Medical, Howard Enterprises, Humphrey Peets, Hartland Funeral Home, Landmark Admin, MC Bank, Painter Johnson Associates, Smith & Sharp Agency, Sonic Drive-In, Stanley Chrysler, Texas Bank, Weldon Wilson Electric, Western Bank, and Woods Peets. All right, we will be back here Wednesday to recap some more Lions and Lady Lions sports on the Brownwood Lions Coach Show on KOXE, KOXE.com, and the KOXE app. Have a great day, Brownwood.